Hello and welcome back to NAS Confairs and today I want to talk about rack mount or desktop NASes. Which one is best for you, your home or your business? So let's go. Okay, so first things first, a rack mount and a desktop NAS are pretty much the two main ways in which you can have a network attached storage device or indeed any storage device really when you think about it. When it comes down to it, when you want to use a DAS, a direct attached storage, or a NAS, a network attached storage, a lot of the time, if you're a home user, you're going to go desktop. It's the most straightforward, easy one to go for, it's easy to set up, and quite frankly, if you're a home user, you shouldn't have any requirement of a rack mount device. Not only that, but it is enormous in terms of the footprint and uh, the physical scale when compared to the desktop unit. So if you're a home user, you can stop watching, thanks for watching, because that's the answer, desktop. However, if you're a business user, even if you're one user that runs his own business or you've got multiple users, there are loads and loads of reasons to go for a rack mount. Now, rather than talk about the advantages and disadvantages of each, what I'm going to do is focus predominantly on the rack mount because there's a lot of things that people don't know about rack mount storage, both in DAS and NAS, that it is worth knowing and knowing well before you make a decision between them. So, first and foremost, the internal hardware. On a rack mount, you will find better CPUs and memory options inside, largely because the cases are so big that they can afford to put in better cooling systems, and we'll touch on that later on, but also they can fit in bigger motherboards, and bigger motherboards mean bigger ports internally. Consequently, in a desktop right now, the biggest, baddest desktop I know off the top of my head is from QNAP, the TBS 1282T3. There is a 16 uh, bay model device, but we're not going to focus on that largely because the hardware on that doesn't compare. Now this has an Intel i7. Uh, another example would be, that, as I mentioned just now, the TS1677 um, and, and 1685. Some of these have Xeon based CPUs and some of them have up to 128 gig of DDR3 or 4 memory, which is enormous. Internally as well, they have three PCIe slots, which is great. But then you look at rack mount devices. Rack mount devices, some of them, have phenomenal 8 and even 12 core CPUs. On top of that, some of them can have 256 gig of memory across 4, 6 and even 8 memory slots. On top of that, you have some of them with rack mount uh, uh, PCIe slots on the rear that let you attach 3, 4, 5 and in some cases 6 PCIe cards into this rack mount storage array. And these cards could be used for additional ports, for graphics cards, they can be used for internally, and SXT cache cards. There are loads and loads of things you can do. So on a rack mount device, the internal hardware is hugely superior. And if scalability and upgrading at a later date is important to you, as well as raw internal power, then definitely a rack mount is for you. If these things matter less to you and you're looking for a more conventionally powerful device, that's when a desktop comes in. Now, talking of hardware, we can move on to one of the other key features that is almost exclusive to rack mount devices, redundant power supplies. What that is, is the rear of a rack mount device doesn't just have one power port and one PSU, power supply unit, but it has two or in some cases three. And once all of these are connected, once your NAS is running 24, seven weeks, months go by, sometimes a power supply can be one of the things that fails. Now, for the record, the hard drive and the uh, PSU of any NAS are the two most frail parts of the device. And by frail, I'm not going to say they're going to break any minute, but in terms of probability and percentages, these are the two items that could fail the most likely out of the entire uh, RAID array on a NAS desktop or rack mount system. Now, because the rack mount devices have redundant power supplies, what that means is if one of those PSUs dies and breaks, the other power supply is already there to pick up the flow and therefore your device will not go down for even a millisecond. Now, if you're still in warranty on your rack mount, you can remove that redundant power supply, introduce a new one, boom, your device is now fully protected again with another redundant power supply. To my knowledge, there's only one um, desktop NAS device that has a redundant power supply and that is in the form of the WDPR4100, that desktop, and that has a couple of PSU ports on the rear, but none of them are internal and it's still not inclusive of another PSU, you have to source that separately. So if the idea of a, f a fail, uh, fallback position in the terms of a secondary PSU is something you want to consider and important to you, you need to consider rack mount storage for that because you do not get that on a desktop system. Next, upgradability. We talked about the PCIe slots, but this isn't even just internally. Rack mount devices 
I can always attach more expansion devices for more storage, more PCIe port and the, you know, and the memory we mentioned earlier on, and generally more port overall. The external hardware on a rack mount is much, much better. You get far more LAN, USB, direct access ports, and all of these features and functionality that give you a better term of upgrading your storage over time. Something desktop units don't give you. So once again, it comes down to that horrible word, future-proofing. The idea you have to spend money now to save money later. And a rack mount gives you that. And in a business, and you want to maximize your investment, that's when a rack mount really does play the game. Now, if you already have a rack arrays dotted around in your business, maybe you're in a supermarket setting or a shop or anywhere where you have a rack cabinet, then it's a no-brainer that you should be considering a rack mount device. Because if you've already got that set up in place, you'll already know that it's better for things like cooling. It's better for centralizing all of your data in one place and having them all working together if you wire them all together. So if you have a rack mount installation in place, you are always going to be more beneficial, it's going to be more beneficial to you to upgrade with rack mounts than move over a to a desktop setting where it won't be able to be in that same place and you'll probably move it to another room where they won't be able to migrate data effectively. So do bear that in mind. But ultimately what it comes down to is a rack mount. The reason rack mounts are for business is because they are for future proof and they are for upgradability and thinking long term. Desktop devices is three to five years. Rack mount, five and above. But, and I'm oh, sorry, I should also mention warranty on rack mounts is always bigger. Three, five, and in some rare cases, 10 years hardware coverage depending on who you contact. Desktop will never give you that five maximum. And even for that, you have to pay through the nose. But what are the advantages of a desktop system? Well, in short, one, utilizes far less power. Rack mount devices, because of the cooling, because of the CPU and the hardware, they consume more power overall. Secondly, rack mount devices make more noise. Desktop units will always be quieter overall. That's the reason racks and servers are normally in their own dedicated room because of the noise they make. Three, active cooling. The cooling on a rack mount is better. It is much, much better, but it's relative. It has to remain a great deal cooler. It's one of the main reasons it uses so much power and has so much noise. That a rack mount device has maybe three or four internal fans as well as rear mounted fans and all the fans that are on the PSUs. Loads of active cooling, which is great, but it has that because it has to have that. A desktop unit, because it doesn't require that much pass through of air, doesn't have that active cooling. So it's not really something we can compare them against because it's relative. But ultimately, if you're a home user, go desktop. If you're a business user and you, are, you want to think beyond five years and you want to really make the most of the devices you're buying, that's when you need to be looking at rack mounts. But otherwise, there are some solid four, eight and 12 bay desktop devices that are great for you. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you next time. If you've got any other questions about your storage, do pop a question there in the comments or click on the article in the description to say to NAS Compares, we've compared the desktop and the rack mount units in a number of ways. But otherwise, if you've enjoyed this, support the channel with a like and subscribe or visit NAS Compares for the free advice. Click that button. See you later.